Now, as fate would have it, and God would have it, he was preparing me for something else that I didn't even know that was going to make me three times as strong. Matter of fact, not even three. It was going to make me 40 times as strong as if I would have took that deal. So now, so now, I get kicked out of Puff's office. I'm sitting around like, what the fuck do I do? I go work in Mount Sinai Hospital. I work in in, a, um, in the laundry department. If you don't know what the laundry department is, any piece of laundry that is used in the hospital goes down the chute. You know, you're on the, you're on the fifth floor in the cancer ward, somebody bleeds and throw the shit down the chute because you got to wash it. It all comes down into a big room. And my job was to go in that room and pick it up. So that's pissy, bloody, shitty, mucus, throw up, anything you can think of, the worst shit, right? And I and you had to put on a pair of goggles if you wanted. And you had gloves and shit like that. Now, sometimes by mistake, a nurse don't give a fuck. They throw in syringes down there, fucking uh scalpels from OR, with anything. You gotta be careful with that <laughs> shit, right? But I need to I need to walk you through this to understand. I had a I had a um I had a a, a um a um supervisor. He used to push us. His name was Eddie. He used to push us like, I want more bends. I want this shit is hard work, bending up and down anyway, fucking your back up. He wanted, I want more, I want more, I want more. And I started getting written up. I was getting written up like every other week. And I said to myself, this is not gonna work, man. I got a kid on the way, man. I can't do this, man. Like I can't, I can't be here. My, I can't do it. This is not going to be the thing that's going to... My kid, man, like, what the fuck am I going to do? So what do I do? I go to the person that I know in the business. I go back to Puff Dad. And I say, hey, Puff, man. I walk in the up to Bad Boy Records at the time. I, I go to Puff and I'm like, yo, Puff. Um, what do I do, man? I, I, I want to be in the music business. So Puff, probably thinking that he could convince me to go back to the shit that I was doing, he said, yo, come here and do record promotion. I was like, what's record promotion? He's like, oh, that's when you talk to all the radio DJs across the country. He said, you mad funny, you this, 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 come and do this shit. And, and, and you know, you can work in radio. So I right, called, cool. that was a Friday evening. I went back home and I called my only friend in the business at that time, real friend, Joe Kirkland. His name is Diamond D. From Diamond D and the Psychotic Neurotics, uh, yeah. Producing digging in or the crates, digging in the crates, the crates, crew. all that shit. Because I went to school with him. We used to rap on the tables and everything. So I said, yo, yo, Joe, I'm trying to be in the music industry, bro. Can, can you help me? And Joe said, yeah, I got you, bro. Um, what do you want to do? I said, I don't know what the fuck to do. You know, Puff told me record promotion. He said, well, I'm going to give you the guy's name, call him and go to me. So I call him on Monday. And he says, well, if Joe says you're good, you're good. Come down here. So I worked from 7 to 3 at Mount Sinai Hospital. And I, I took the, my lunch break off. And I got off the 2. I took a shower. And I went down to... to um, uh, this time chemistry. Had... No, chemistry. This okay. was L.O.G. and the Bulldogs, Poison yeah. Pots. Yeah, that. chemistry records. Yeah. The day that I go down there... I meet Daryl Lockhart. If there's no Daryl Lockhart, there's no Fat Man Scoop. Daryl Lockhart used to be a promo rep at chemistry. He looks at me, he says, yo, the Diamond D says, you're, you're okay, you're okay. And it was uh, it was me, um, a guy named uh, JC. Was JC Hairston there? No, no. Did JC work with you? Who? JC Hairston. No. Who was, pro who, who was promo on the Biggie tape that I did? I forget. I'll get the name later, but anything, I think it was J.C. Heston that was the a &R. They had a bunch of a &R, they had a bunch of interns that were coming in. Okay, so you so went in as an intern. You went in yeah, I went in as an intern. I went in as an intern. There was a bunch of, there was maybe about seven or eight interns that were coming in at that time. The a &R, the main a &R at Chemistry's name was Brian Chen. And they had a &R interns, they had promo interns, about eight of us. And I went in there, and I could see that every other person was in there. They were on the phone talking to chicks. And, Yo, I'm working here, and I'm doing this, and bullshitting, and, you know, what, whatever. They fucking playing games and whatever. But I went in with the eye of the tiger because I had a kid coming. 
and I had to save my family's life, and that was my shit. So I was on a whole different fucking level. And uh, um, Dow Lockhart said, yo, I got a pile of CDs. And what they did was back in the day, CDs used to have the plastic cover on it. Remember? Yep. They had, they had made 27,000 CDs for a group named Poison Posse, who was Sweet T's group. But they had fucked up and put the wrong lettering. I put the wrong message on He said, yo, man, it was 27. It was like fucking like 200 boxes of that shit. Well, maybe more. He said, yo, you got to go in there, cut the plastic off and put the right. We got the. We got the, 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 the stickers, you got to put the new sticker on. And it took me about a week and a half, but I did all 27,000 of them. And when I finished, I said, well, what else do you have for me? He said, you will go sweep the floor. I'll sweep the floors, sweep it the best way I can. So what else you got for me? You'll go wash the windows. And this went on for about two or three weeks for maybe, maybe a month. Like, what do you need to do? Yo, I would come down there every day and arrange pencils, dumb shit, like just stupid Mr. Miyagi, wax on, wax off shit. Meanwhile, all these dudes are still on the phone playing games, sending out records to their girlfriend, all kind of shit. One day he said, yo, man, I'm not using this. Here's this list. It's the C list of college radio. You know, the stations, nobody fucking with you, nobody paying attention. He said, call these people and let them know that we got NOG and the Bulldogs coming. Be a father to your child or whatever the fuck it was. I called that list. I started getting busy. And now I'm, you know, I'm doing my thing with the C list. So he says, yo, man, shit, you do your thing with the C list. Now keep in mind, I'm getting off at I'm going to work at I'm I'm, I'm going to work at 7 a.m. I'm working from 7 to 2. I'm taking a shower at my job from 2 to 2.15 in the fucking upstairs in the third floor in the delivery room, and I'm going down, I'm rushing on the, on the train, I'm going down to Chemistry Records, I'm working there from three to 11, and then I'm getting on the, the express bus to be back on Gun Hill Road at like 12, 15, and I sleep, I get in the bed 12, I get in the house 12, 12, 20, I take a shower 12, 30, 12, 45, I sleep from 12, 45 to 5, 5, 15 the next morning. I do that for a year and a half. So he says, yo, Take my B-list. Fuck it. Just take my B-dudes. I'll focus on, you know, the big guys and shit, right? The big guys in college radio, right? Like DJ Riz and all these motherfuckers, right? I, I start killing the B-list. I'm killing the B-list. He's like, okay, just, just, you my, you my lieutenant. You my lieutenant. So now he handling all the A people. I'm handling the B's and C's. All the records are getting played now. We kill it. So now this is, this goes on for about a year and a half. One day I get a call from a guy named Albi Ragusa at Tommy Boy Records, right? Many days I want to quit, but I'm like, no, no, just keep going on, man. Something's going to come at the end. One day I get a call from Albi Ragusa at Tommy Boy Records. He says, hey, man, uh, this is Albi Ragusa. Now, I know who Albi Ragusa is because Tommy Boy Records is the shit. So he's the man who's designing all the back covers of the source. And people, the source magazine today would be Getting your getting your video or your your song placed on World Star, all hip hop, XXL, it would be like the equivalent of just whatever the biggest shit is in terms of reach. A ball alert, a, a, a fucking a shit. It would be all of those shits put in the one, right? Would, would you agree with that? Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. So he calls me, and I'm like, oh my god, I'll be. He calls Chemistry Records. He's like, I'm looking for school. He said, Who is it? I'll be Ragusa from Tommy Boy. And they said, Albi Ragusa from Tommy Boy is on the phone for you. But nobody pays attention. I pick up the phone. I'm like, hey, hey, uh, Albi, how you doing? He said, listen, man, I want to offer you a job at Tommy Boy Records and rap promotion. I want you to run the rap department. I said, you want me to run? run, run? Because I'm stuttering now. I'm like, you want me to run the rap, the rap, rap department? And he said, yeah, I want you to run the rap department. I'll, I'll, you know, Naughty by Nature, House of Pain, De La Soul, yes. Okay, see you later. Be safe. Um, you know, House of Pain, Naughty by Nature, De La Soul, you know those guys? You ever heard of those guys? Or, you, you, you know, you, why, why, why do you want to, why are you picking me? He said, because I got on the phone and I spoke to every DJ and I asked them the three people that they, sp they spoke to last. Every time I spoke to all these DJs, 
They all said your name. Incredible. I want to interject before we move this on because you're dropping so much good stuff, Scoop. How long, by the time you got that call from Tommy Boy Records, you were working at Chemistry for a year, year and a half? Year and a half, man. And there were Going many hard. days. Going hard. Many days. Fuck okay. this, man. No, I'm tired. No, I don't want to do this, man. I was on the fucking, you know, I would, I would be on the express bus on the way home from Mount Sinai Hospital. I mean, from 23rd, 23rd Street Chemistry Records, sleep on the bus and get to the fucking end of the thing. And I'm still sleeping the bus, man. He just got to the point where at the end, he would just wake me up. So, so let me ask you something, school. Did you ever get an official job while you were at chemistry? Or, did, or was that intern in the whole way? I was intern the whole way. Okay. For anybody who is listening, anybody who is watching, I talk about trust in the process all the time. But you staying committed you going, the, the, the fact that, and you said it multiple times, you had a full-time job, a full-time job that was paying your bills, 7, in, 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. You leave your full-time job and take my, I don't, I don't eat, I take my lunch. And I use my lunch to take a shower and go down there. It, but that level of commitment, that level, that level of dedication, if you want success, if you're trying to reach your goals, if you're trying to do something that you have no idea how you're going to get it, first, you got to put in the work. And you are a classic example of putting in the work and understanding that there is more than eight hours in a day. So many people, they sit and they give themselves every excuse on planet Earth for why they're not achieving their dreams, for why they can't do what it is that they say they want to do. Their mouth says, I want to do it, but I'm tired. But I have a full-time job. You, you, you working two full-time jobs and not getting paid for one of them. So I love that. But what I really love about what you just told us, you, 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 for a year and a half, you work for free, interning. But in that year and a half, you were building up your presence in the industry. The, the rest of the world didn't know that you weren't getting paid. When you got that call from Tommy Boy, they didn't know you weren't getting paid. They're they just looking know. at it. He's doing his thing and we need him over here. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.